Herc, we may not talk about it a whole lot, but there will be CONCACAF World Cup qualifying for 2026, even if the US, Mexico, and Canada are already in as hosts. There's still another three and a half spots to be handed out to the biggest tournament in world football as we take a look at the groups formed at today's CONCACAF World Cup qualifying draw. There's 30 teams total left for what they're calling the second round. There's another round to go after this. They're going to be split into six groups, five teams each. Uh, Honduras, your headliner in Group A, Costa Rica in Group B, Haiti in Group C, Panama, the pretty big favorite there in Group D, Jamaica and Guatemala in Group E, El Salvador, Puerto Rico, and Suriname uh, among the many teams there listed in Group F. Now, I know what you're asking yourself, Herc. Where was today's draw held? Right, the very important questions. Well, Zurich, Switzerland, uh, of course, because FIFA has its offices there. They want to keep an eye on the draw. We know we've had some kind of wacky draws of late. Looking at you, Conmebol with Copa America. Now, this draw was run incredibly smoothly, Herc, and I happen to know why, because the person in charge was none other than our friend and colleague, Alexis Nunez. Alexis, first of all, how did you get the gig, and how were you so cool during that? I would have been super nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was super nervous. This is FIFA that we're talking about, so you do feel like the eyes of the world are on you, especially with Mr. President Gianni Infantino watching close by, but... Um, honestly, it was great. They, of course, it's it, it's an exciting time. I think not just for FIFA, but for the Concacaf region. The fact that the next World Cup is in the Concacaf region, and I know it's nothing new. The USA having hosted a, a a World Cup before, especially in our lifetimes as well. But this is such an unprecedented one with the fact that it's the USA, Mexico, and Canada too. Very different countries, very different cultures, very different people, but still, you know, very good representatives of CONCACAF. And then the fact that this draw now, I know you kind of teased it because obviously the big guns, aka USA, Mexico, and Canada, are already qualified because they're hosts. But don't forget about the rest of us, like Jamaica, who, you know, just even qualifying for a World Cup kind of feels like winning a World Cup in and of itself. So now the fact that the next World Cup has been opened up to more teams and the fact that up to eight CONCACAF teams could actually be representing the Confederation at a World Cup is just kind of mind-blowing when you think of that level of representation for our region. So it kind of feels like the stakes are a lot higher than they have been in the past. Alexis, quickly, let's talk format here, because folks are accustomed in CONCACAF to the hex or what we had last time, the OC. I don't know what we ended up calling Oct it. Uh, things are different right now, so as best as you can, kind of explain what the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying format uh, is going to be. Yeah, well, quickly, like I said, if we just look at it as just a tournament in and of itself, which is the kind of vibe that we're going for for this one, obviously, you no know, USA, Mexico, and Canada. So the rest of the 30 teams, as you mentioned, have been divided into six groups of five. So each um, team will play each other twice. Oh, there I am. Each team will play <laughs> each other uh, two home games and two away games each country will get. And then the top two teams of each group will advance to what is known as the final round. Now, of course, all of the big guns, and I mean the 30 teams complete, they will start off in June, but there is still some matches coming up in March, and that's the four lowest ranked teams um, in CONCACAF. We're talking about Anguilla, US Virgin Islands, um, as well as the British Virgin Islands and Turks and Caicos. They will play in the playoffs for the right to play with the best of the, the other boys um, in June. And then after that, we're talking about towards the end of 2025, that's the final round. After the 12 teams come out of these six groups, they will be placed um, into groups of four, three groups of four, and then the winners of those groups, so three, will join the USA, Mexico, and Canada at the 2026 FIFA World Cup. But the runners up of those groups will be heading to a playoff so, which is why I say there's still two more spots up for grabs for CONCACAF teams uh, to make it to the World Cup. So we could have up to eight, and I think that's just exciting. You know, the only thing I don't like about this, Seb and Alexis, is let's say I was listening to my good friend Jose Del Valle speak about Guatemala. Guatemala would have to go play Jamaica in Jamaica, but Jamaica wouldn't have to go play Guatemala mm -hmm. in Guatemala. That's the problem with this draw. Uh, essentially, it's not a home and away versus the same team. There are some teams that are favored here, which makes these groups very, very interesting. The luck of the draw is going to determine the World Cup. So, Alexis, let's talk about this group. What's the most interesting group of you or the group of death for you? 
Do you know what? I'm going to put the Jamaica's group to one side, of course, because right before Jamaica was drawn with Guatemala, I read a stat of Guatemala's biggest um, World Cup qualifying win where they won 10-0 and they had 10 different scorers. And that was only back in 2021, so not that far off. And Jamaica's defense will definitely have their hands full with that, but we'll get to that in a bit. I think actually Group B, which has shocked Costa Rica, actually looks like quite an intriguing group for me. And it has Costa Rica, which... Yes, on paper, are definitely clear, clear favorites. Costa Rica have qualified for the last three World Cups. They have a certain pedigree as well. This is nothing new for them. But they also have Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, who, remember, went to the World Cup back in 2006 with our boy, Shaka Hislop, Zay Kitson, and the Bahamas. And I just want to say Trinidad and Tobago is definitely a very intriguing um, matchup for Costa Rica. I mean, TNT have given us some great footballers like Shaka, like Kenwin Jones, and like a certain man by the name of Dwight York as well. And of course, the Soka Warriors have had a fall, but the fact that this tournament has kind of opened up so much, they have actually been quite competitive, at least locally. So I think now will be a big test for them to go up against the likes of Costa Rica. I still expect Costa Rica to top this group, but also St. Kitts and Nevis and Grenada, I know many people probably, unless you're in the Caribbean like me, will know much of them, but they have definitely invested in their football over the years with the idea of giving these World Cup qualifiers a nice run. And I think that that could definitely come into play. So they could be potential banana skins for Costa Rica. Again, I still expect them to go through. But if we put Costa Rica through, I still wouldn't be surprised if St. Kitts and Nevis or even Grenada could cause Trinidad and Tobago some trouble. We might have to get Shaka back in goal. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Hey, Zef, get, 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 I know we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna talk Jamaica in a second, but can we briefly like that's a semi group of death for me right there? Because if you think about Jamaica, Guatemala, uh, they're a very good team. Um, we saw what they did in the Gold Cup. Jamaica is an enigma. You, you can get the good Jamaica, which is gonna steamroll teams, or the bad Jamaica that doesn't show up. And the Dominican Republic, remember, for the first time in their history, qualified for U20 World Cup for Olympic Games. Got a very interesting generation coming up. A lot of those players in Spanish football. It's it's interesting group for me. All right. Uh, she did mention Jamaica. So, and I know that we found out today Alexis Nunes, a woman of many talents. She's also a woman of many passports. So let's check in on that Jamaican heritage, Alexis. Give us kind of what your friends and family back home are saying, not just about this draw, but maybe about the expectations around this Jamaican team and qualifying for the 2026 World Cup, which we know, of course, would be the first time back at the World Cup since 1998. Guys, first of all, I literally only have one passport. <laughs> it's the right passport. one. It's the right one. And let me tell you, it no, because I will happily trade it for your U.S. passports where you can get into so many countries <laughs> without a visa. You know I need a visa to breathe outside on my Jamaican passport. But we move. Proudly Jamaican, obviously. And yes, this is a very interesting group for the reggae boys. I got to do the draw today with Ricardo Bibi Gardner, who, you know, is a Jamaican great who went to the 98 World Cup. He was still very young. He was only 18 years old. And I actually asked him because I feel like this is the most hype I've felt about a reggae boys team since that crop of players that took us to the World Cup back in 98. And I asked him, how do you think they compare? You know, do you think they're more talented than you guys were? Or do you think that uh, maybe you guys still had the edge because you already made it to the World Cup? And he said he felt like the 98 group of players had that raw talent and they just went out. And, and obviously luck was on their side. However, this group of Jamaican players has a lot more experience. And I mean, you talk about the, the regular local boys I want to talk about. Andre Blake, only Jesus saves more at Philadelphia Union. He has been an absolute <laughs> stalwart in MLS as well as for Philadelphia and Jamaica. You talk about Leon Bailey, who is doing absolute bits for Aston Villa recently. Um, Mikel Antonio, who maybe is on the wrong side of age if we're gonna look ahead to 2026, but he, if he gets fit again, he can still definitely help the reggae boys in qualifying. And then you have so many more of the young players as well. You have Joel Latibadier, who's playing at Coventry City in the championship and doing well. Um, you have Damari Gray as well, who's quite young too. So there's a nice group of players who have a lot of experience behind them and more experience than we've seen. If Jamaica doesn't qualify for the World Cup this time around with the USA, Mexico and Canada already qualifying, I will be absolutely shocked. I will buy all of you 
a hundred drinks because this I think is the most talented crop of Jamaican players. I think we should top this group. Guatemala definitely will give us some issues. Dominican Republic as well, probably. Um, but I think they should be able to either handle the British Virgin Islands or the US Virgin Islands as well as Dominica. But I think overall what let Jamaica down in the last round of qualifiers was, yes, they got all of the players that they wanted at one time, but we all know that you need time to get the players to gel mm -hmm. and to be on the same page and to find a style, find an identity and have them all understand that. They didn't have that at last time. They had a lot of the players like Mikhail Antonio who's passports got delayed because of covid so they kind of just threw them out there as a starter and they just didn't know how to mesh now they've had time to build on that they have a new coach in halgrimson who by the way took iceland to the world cup so he's now with jamaica trying to do the same thing and i think there's a lot of hype around this team and it's it's very much justified there she is alexis nunez putting the pressure squarely on the reggae boys ahead of the start of a World Cup qualifying later this year.